Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Jinminju. I hope I'm pronouncing that sort of kind of right. Probably not. Um, you can feel free to correct me in the comments below if you so wish and you feel so inclined. Anyway, it is a uh, tree with faces. Uh, this is actually a really, really fun paint. Uh, it, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, there's some hard parts uh, sticking in, in in between the in between the tree branches a little bit. Uh, not too bad though. Uh, not a whole lot of colors, and spoiler, but I get to use vomit on this, so anytime I can say that I needed vomit to paint a tree, I'm pretty excited. I actually looked into this a little bit, and I guess the faces are actually its fruit? Um, I wouldn't eat it. Like, how do you know it's it's fruit? Anyway, I don't know. Uh, anyway, pretty cool, so let's, uh, let's start. Okay, so as always, I start with uh, the prep work, and uh, here it's very minor, actually. That gap is probably the most egregious thing on this miniature, and that's really easy to handle. So, otherwise, just a little bit of trimming on the roots, and that's about it. There's uh, there's technically a little bit on the faces, um, not a whole lot. Um, yeah, it's actually pretty simple. I will say I was kind of disappointed in some of the faces. The mold just doesn't work, and I think it's just... Uh, with however uh, Simon does this, um, hair and faces or skulls kind of are, are hard to get. Um, you saw it with the, um, the first Oni I painted as well, the Oni of Spite. Uh, so here I just have some liquid green stuff from Citadel and then the Citadel scraping tool and I'm just getting it a little wet and then plopping it on there and uh, pretty easy stuff honestly. I I don't even really scrape it. A again, this is a tree, so it's supposed to have texture, so I'm not too concerned about it. I'm scraping it as I'm putting it in there, but otherwise I'm fine. Here I am showing that I am priming this in gray, so it is primed, it's just gray, so it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. And then we get out the sterling mud. So you might recall me using this from the uh, New Year Ona that I painted previously. I actually painted this guy first, I'm just now getting around to editing. Uh, this one and uh, I must say I do like this texture it, it just it works really well and doesn't uh, add a lot of a lot of depths to the base so I'm gonna fast forward uh, as you saw right there and uh, just kind of skip that it's a very kind of long process to really get it inside of there but you just go around and and uh, push it inside there and in fact you need a little bit more so here I have a brush that I don't really care about and I'm scooping up the texture and then putting it inside there where I can still see gray. And then I'm also bringing it up a little bit onto the roots. Alternatively, you could paint the tree first and do this on top of it. I think you're going to get the same amount of blending either way, so I'm not too concerned with it. All right, and then we go on to Monster Brown. This is going to be my base coat, and I'm going to darken it a little bit, but I don't want it too dark because I really want it to pop out of this mud a little bit. Um, so I'm going to paint a little bit lighter, but I'm going to add a lot of different colors to this. You'll see it uh, by the end here, but it, it's going to be a quite different color from this. This is very much just a base color. Um, and I'm going to paint, you know, the, the trunk and the branches are easy. But then there are all the pieces that are coming like out of the, the, the face's mouths. And uh, it, it's debatable on, on what you want to do there. I think it's going to be time consuming either way. So I'm going to say my reasoning. So I'm going to paint all of the branches right now instead of painting the hair first. Theoretically, you could paint the hair and just paint everything in the hair and do the hair a little bit quicker and then paint this brown on top. But because the hair is darker, you might need two coats. Um, additionally, with it darker, see, even now, it's kind of hard to always find the branches because they look a lot like the hair, too, um, until you paint them. And in fact, I miss one. You, you'll see it later on when I'm, I'm painting the hair, I have to paint around it, and it's just gray. I, I miss the branch. I feel I would have missed even more if it was dark, um, or at least it would have taken me a lot. It would have been a little bit more of a, a challenge to paint it once it was all dark. It would just, I think, kind of all look the same. So I'm painting them in now, and then I have to paint around them when I paint the hair. Um, it is defined enough to where I didn't have to touch up any, which is good, uh, but it, it is kind of time consuming. So just take that into account. And by time consuming, I mean I, I spent about two and a half hours on this miniature, so it wasn't wasn't terrible for a miniature this size. But it is quite simple, and you could probably do it quicker if you painted the hair first.
Okay, as we're wrapping this up here, I just wanted to, you know, note that this is actually sped up quite a bit. This is definitely the most time consuming part. Um, in fact, I think this took longer than the hair. Maybe the hair takes a bit longer, but I, I actually don't think so. Um, so it, anyway, it, it just, it takes a while. And then be sure to get those roots at the bottom. Okay, so now we're moving on to the hair, and we're going to start with Dark Stone. Again, this is a base color. I'm going to be adding several different colors to this to really gunk it up. Really, this tree just looks disgusting by the end of it, and that's kind of the whole point. It's supposed to look gross and nasty. So if you look at the concept art, I imagine the hair is probably supposed to be black, but in the concept art, it's not black like anywhere, because there's it's just slimy and mossy and dirty and it, either way so I picked a very dark kind of brown here this or a dark it's kind of a brown gray uh, anyway this is dark stone and uh, I think it's a really good base color that I can I can lighten up but also still darken um, so I'm, I'm gonna do that at a later point right now as you can see I am speeding along on the video here I'm just taking my time with this very small brush this is actually one of my new uh, Windsor and Newton brushes that I bought with the Patreon money, so thank you for that. I will be uh, continuing to mention how I feel about them uh, as I use them, and, and then I might even do a proper review at the end. Um, I really enjoyed this. I, I think it was nice. It held a really good tip, and uh, it's pretty small. I think this is actually a triple zero. It's because I really want really good control around these branches. I don't want to have to paint them again, and this prevented me from having to do that. I didn't need to. I was able to control the paint quite well. So uh, all around a good experience so far. Now after I paint uh, and kind of trace around these, I will come in with a regiment brush and then just paint in the rest. Um, I actually have a number one size Windsor Newton, same as a regiment brush, but it's such a small job I didn't bother pulling it out for that. It, it's pretty quick just to fill in the, the gaps afterwards. And be sure to uh, also trace around the, the faces here. Those faces are going to be quite uh, bright and so you don't want to add this dark color to it. Okay, and now we're moving on to Agrax Earthshade, and we are going to cover both the tree and the hair in this. So again, I have my regiment brush out. If you had a monster brush, I would totally recommend that and then just really nail this out. Um, I think it would be easy enough to avoid the faces. That's it. The faces and the base are the only thing you're not messing with right now. Everything else is 
uh, covered in this Agrax or shade. So the tree branches coming out of the face and the hair are going to have this wash. All right, and then following that up with some known oil on the base itself. The reason I did this now is because it gave me some time to let that Agrax or shade dry. Uh, if, if you kind of stage your your washes like this, you can uh, avoid just having the miniature sit there as it dries, which is kind of nice. And again, I'm putting a heavy layer on here, really getting those recesses, and I want it pretty dark and, and nasty. So I'm not going to be highlighting it up too much later on. Alright, so next up is Vomit. This step right here is slightly debatable. Um, I'm going to end up adding Vomit again later, and you could probably just do it all at that time. Uh, I'm, I'm fine doing it now because uh, it'll, it'll still get kind of uh, blended in with everything else, but you could probably skip doing it now. Uh, but uh, as you can see, at least right here, I'm just kind of putting it where, the, where it's coming out of the mouth. And really, that's it for these faces. Um, uh, the one part you don't want to um, perhaps skip yet is right here where I start putting it on the tops because you want that a little bit uh, brighter. And then uh, I kind of splotch. I, I really just kind of speckle the, the tree trunk, just the top portion in that vomit. I now have a Thonia in Camo Shade, which is a green uh, shade or a green wash, and I'm putting this just in targeted places around the uh, miniature as well, both on the hair and on the branches. Again, not doing it on the trunks. Uh, the trunks are going to get, a, uh, or the the roots, they're going to get a bit of a, a different uh, treatment here. So now we have some browns, we have some really bright textured kind of shiny green, and then we have kind of this very dark muted green wash that's going to seep into the recesses a bit and then slightly tint the, the top portion. So we have the brown, we have the dark brown wash, and then two greens as well. So again, just really kind of making this look nasty and, uh, and overall disgusting. Okay, so now I have the uniform gray out, and this is for the roots. So again, uh, on the concept art, they look a little bit, I guess, drier is probably a good term for it. Um, and so this is just to give it a little bit of diff, you know, just change it a little bit um, between the roots and the trunk. But I am going to come back over here in Agrax or Shade and just kind of blend it in a little bit. So I'm doing what I did with the Ethonian Camo Shade, where I'm just splotching it in kind of places. I'm not really washing it. And it's just kind of the top part, but kind of mixed in. So it goes from kind of heavier at the top of the roots to lighter at the bottom. Okay, next up is Werewolf Fur, and this is for the mud dry brush. I did the same with the Nier Ona, and I do like how it turned out. It's a, a very light, you could go a level higher and do a light highlight, especially in certain spots. I think mud would look great, not too uniform. 
How this dries though, the dry brush naturally lends to kind of splotches where there are, are pieces that are, are heavier dry brush than others because it's flatter. Uh, but I think this did really good. All right, next up is Oak Brown. This is a good um, rim color for the base uh, as it matches the mud quite well. I think it, it's, it's uh, almost right where the mud was before the wash. So a good color to use there. All right, so now we have Rotten Whiteout. This is another uh, technical paint or effects paint from Vallejo, and this is for the faces. And what Rotten White seems to me, I didn't, you know, necessarily do a whole lot of looking up here. I just kind of played around with it, but it's a, it's quite white um, with a tiny bit of yellow in there, and it's slightly clumpy um, on purpose, not not like a bad clumpy. Um, just a, it's not quite a flat. It's very matte. Um, but yeah, anyway, it just kind of a, a nasty color. I mentioned on bigger portions, it'd look even grosser with a little bit of the clumps in there, but you can kind of see them on there already. It just, it's pretty gross. Um, I did need two coats of this to give proper coverage. So I only filmed one, the second one is off camera. Anyway, just uh, take your time and uh, be careful because you don't want to have to touch up too much. I did touch up a few of the strands that go over the face. That's fine, it's easy to do. Alright, so now we have Seraphim Sepia out, and now at the beginning you're just going to see the, the kind of uh, back of my, my hand here as I, I wipe up, uh, but uh, eventually I start wiping down as well. Really you're just trying to dirty it up. Now I do not highlight this back up. You could. I debated whether or not I was going to. In fact, I originally had planned to. But after looking at it, I thought it, it was just bright enough to not really... I didn't want them to like pop out. I didn't want them to... I didn't want to look like a spotted tree, right? And so I think the Seraphim Sepia just sitting on this rotten white brings it to a really good color that blends in, but it's still brighter and noticeable. So I leave it as is. All right, and look at that. We are already varnishing up. This was actually a pretty quick one. So I was pr pretty pleased with this. So after the matte varnish, I'm now coming back out with the vomit. So the vomit keeps the color, but it loses its kind of its shininess. And I'm just adding a little bit. I'm not trying to add more green here. I'm just trying to make it that very sickly looking shiny vomit that, that it has. So I'm going to again come over on all the mouths and just kind of put a little bit there. And then I'm going to splotch the tree again with it just to give it a little bit of sliminess and make sure to get on top of the heads. That's, that's my favorite part really, because that's disgusting. And real quick, this is the vomit. This is dried. That's just the shininess it has. It looks like a somebody blew their nose in my napkin. But anyway, here is the finished miniature. This is it completely done. Again, a fairly easy paint job. Uh, a lot of fun to do. Any time you're uh, messing up or making anything look dirty, whether it's metal armor, whether it's this tree with vomit on it, uh, it's kind of hard to mess up because it just is supposed to look haphazard and gross and disgusting. And so you can just kind of blotch away and overall, you know, do a, a nasty job of it. So I really like this miniature. I think it's a fantastic model. A little unfortunate about some of the faces. You can see one here at the kind of the front there. A little 
loss of definition, but otherwise really impressed with the hair going over them and the, the, just the branches coming out. Overall, a very cool miniature. Anyway, I wanted to thank my uh, patrons as well. You can see them on the screen now. Thank you so much for your support, uh, both uh, the ones that pledge at these tiers and the others, and of course, just all of you viewers as well. I really appreciate it. You guys make it so worth it. I always enjoy your comments, and I look forward to reading them. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll talk to you again soon.